A very good morning to you and you're here with me Harit on Good Morning Sri Lanka on the 28th of January and it's a lovely morning and of course the MTV Sports celebrating its first anniversary on the 26th of January and today is our first show for our second year in existence. Of course we had a very interesting show on the 26th. We had a gentleman like Arunjan Ranatunga, uh, Percy, our favourite cricket fan coming to the studios and on the same day of course leading into the weekend sports news, Sri Lanka beating Australia in the first T20 match at, uh, at the Sydney Cricket Ground. Uh, by five wickets, uh, Australia scoring 138, and the Sri Lankans very, uh, very good, uh, convincing performance, and interestingly, a very uh, encouraging performance by young Kusal Pereira, who seemed to show a very good technique and brought us memories of good old Sanat back in the day with those uppercuts over square leg. So good news. Of course, talking a little bit about Sanat Jayasuriya, interesting news passing around in the week uh, weekend that he might be tipped to be the next chairman of the selectors of Sri Lanka cricket. So there's been of discussion whether he can get into Sanat of course after his fantastic cricketing days getting into many things into dancing into politics and now into the chairman's shoes of the Sri Lanka cricket of course uh, other in other uh, sporting events in Australia, we had the uh, tennis uh, open. The Australian Open was concluded on Sunday, and of course, if you watch the matches today, it was a fantastic game uh, between Djokovic and and Murray. And Djokovic coming up trumps at the end of the day uh, in a four-set match where he won uh, in with a score of six seven seven six six three six two. He won the last three sets seven six six three six two. Of course, uh, Murray struggled with a few injuries at the end of the day but if you watch the game you would see that Barre up to the up to about three hours in the game was with toe to toe with Djokovic and it was only after three hours Djokovic broke up and from there Murray suffered an injury and in the women's uh, singles of course uh, world number one Victoria Azarenka uh, came not trumps uh, with Li Na of China. Again, Li Na of China suffered an ankle injury and a slight concussion where she fell onto the floor. And again, because of that injury, uh, she won, possibly made victory for Azarenka much easier. Of course, Azarenka was very tearful, uh, very emotional about her victory because uh, there was a lot of criticism of her in her semi final match against uh, Stephanie Sloan, the young 19 year old uh, from USA, who she said was uh, set up by Victoria Azarenka by her extended medical timeout. A emotional win, but a fantastic tournament for the Australian Open and a revenge for Djokovic at the end of the day following the US Open as well. Um, in Sri Lanka today is going to be a very interesting day because we are apparently going to have a new cabinet. The reshuffling of our already very large cabinet is going to happen today. And we also might have a new Prime Minister appointed. The current Prime Minister, His Honourable uh, Dimu Jayaratna, is not capable of ca 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 uh, carrying on with his functions as Prime Minister. So we might have a new uh, Prime Minister. We will have a reshuffling of the cabinet. Well, I hope that it will only be a reshuffling and not adding a few more cards into the pack. Uh, we will have to see what happens there. Well, along with that, of course, there was some disturbing uh, uh, disturbing news uh, coming in uh, about the recent uh, national anthem crisis. About our Independent Day celebrations over the week, we have been seeing uh, certain clashes happening between uh, certain parts of the community. Uh, with regard to the celebrations going to be held in Trinco this time for independent, uh, our, our Independence Day, where the uh, Minister of National Languages and Social Integration, I mean, Honorable Vasudevan Anekar, suggested that we sing a consolidated national anthem which has uh, Sinhalese parts as well as the Tamil parts added to it and there has been a lot of opposition from uh, especially the uh, Buddhist clergy who have not agreed to this and uh, citing that there will be ethnic tensions with regard to that so that may have been uh, put aside for the moment but personally if you ask me I would rather sing the national anthem in Russia Russian if I had to if it does not create any more civil conflict in this country because civil conflict ethnic conflict is something we must prevent and I think we must let aside our majority pride or our ethnic pride for the betterment of our country so maybe it's not such a bad thing we'll have to think about it and I think the changes should happen with uh, with time of course uh, several other interesting things happening around the country uh, uh, over the weekend we had also news about uh, gang rape report uh, from the areas of Nugegoda, which also cites uh, that Sri Lanka is not free. And we were all talking about it, we were all posting on Facebook and emails about this issue when it happened in India, but there's not much.
much talk about it when it happens in Sri Lanka, our own country itself shows that our ladies are not safe and, uh, and not, not everything is happy in Sri Lanka as well. And uh, before we go into the commercial break, uh, we have a fantastic uh, show coming up with a wonderful interview with a uh, very interesting gentleman, a multi-talented man who has been around the country and around the world and he is going to talk about, about the fashion industry as well as his multi uh, various interests in the in the field and also his concept of social entrepreneurship and with that we'll go into a quick break on good morning sri lanka and see you on the other side Hello there and welcome back to Good Morning Sri Lanka, you are with me here Harith. Uh, wonderful show as we had a bit of a round up about the news on the weekend and as I told you we have a very interesting guest. Uh, we have Mr. Prasanna Padmanathan. Uh, good morning Prasanna, welcome to Good Morning Sri Lanka. Good morning Harith. So Prasanna, as I had a little chat with you just before the show, uh, you are a very interesting personality. You have many in interesting aspects in your life. Just tell us a little bit about who Mr. Prasanna Padmanathan is. Uh, thanks for the compliment, Harit. Um, well, me, Prasanna Padmanathan, um, I would say I play different roles, uh, totally contrasting from one to the other. Um, I'm basically a business and a communication consultant, uh, and I'm a corporate trainer, and also um, I'm a lecturer for undergraduate studies. Mm -hmm. So that is what I do mainly where I do a uh, lot of uh, training for corporates. I've trained more than 400 to 500 participants from more than 25 to 30 country, uh, uh, companies in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. And I've conducted training internationally as well. Uh, and at the same time, I do consult uh, startup brands in Sri Lanka uh -huh. and also some established brands as well in terms of their communication, in terms of marketing and PR and things like that. I see. Also, I conduct uh, classes for undergraduate studies in IT and marketing. I see. So that is what uh, mainly I do. Okay. Other than that, um, I've involved with a lot of work related to fashion in Sri Lanka. Right now, Prasanna, that brings us to the I think the main area of this discussion. Of course, aside from all of those activities that you do, social entrepreneurship. Uh, you mentioned that we'll ask. I'll ask you what that is uh, later on. But in the fashion industry. Uh, you are involved in the fashion industry in various manners. So, can you tell us how you became interested in this industry as, uh, uh, first? Well, uh, fashion, how it came to my life is like an accident, I would say. Never expected that I would get into the fashion industry in Sri Lanka. Uh, basically, uh, I started as a writer for a magazine mm -hmm. uh, and then when I started writing for that magazine in in different areas fashion really attracted me I see I got a chance of interviewing all top celebrities in Sri Lanka so when I spoke to them and when I uh, started doing features and interviews with them I really thought there's a lot of potential in the Sri Lankan fashion industry at the same time I got chances to go and see Sri Lankan fashion shows beauty pageants fashion contests trade shows things like that so uh, what happened was when I went to these type of things I thought uh, I can do something better mm -hmm. than what is happening already which um, made me think that I need to find new avenues in terms of to do well in fashion right so I'm more of a fashion incubator I could say that is the right word I see or in normal term, terms it's called a fashion promoter so I promote Sri Lankan fashion I see. Uh, in terms of fashion designers, models, everyone, locally and internationally through different routes. I see. So where I'm a fashion journalist, where I write about fashion, I interview and feature uh, uh, models, fashion mm -hmm. designers, mm -hmm. upcoming ones and the established ones. Mm -hmm. I do style fashion shoots where I develop the concept, I pick the best model, the designer and everything. I conceptualize a shoot. Mm -hmm. Plus, I do fashion show production mm -hmm. where I produce fashion shows, I direct pageants and things like that. Right. Plus, I own the uh, franchise for Mr. Earth in Sri Lanka. I see. Now, coming from that, you can see Prasanna has a very uh, wide array and involvement in fashion. And because of this, he has in fact been awarded this award for the young creative entrepreneur in fashion and design, uh, I understand. So Prasanna, can you tell us a little bit about this award and what it led to? Well, um, this is one of the prestigious awards, Aritha, in Sri Lanka. 
uh, it's called the Young Creative Entrepreneur mm -hmm. Fashion and Design Award. Mm -hmm. um, the year that I won was two th for 2012 and 2013. Right. Right. Where it's again, it's a British Council initiative with mm -hmm. Sri Lankan Design Festival in Sri Lanka, where they pick a spokesperson for the country, uh, a talented person out of uh, 20 to 25 creative sectors in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. So, starting from fashion designing to architecture, interior designing, graphic designing, mm -hmm. media, journalism, fashion promotion, event management. So, there are plenty of areas. If you are part of this particular area, you could apply for this award. Right. Uh, and uh, I applied for this award and out of around uh, 300 to 400 applicants, they have picked shortlisted four. So, four of us we went for the final interview where we had to do a presentation about what's our uh, idea, entrepreneurial idea in terms of Sri Lankan fashion and design mm -hmm. and um, how we will uh, exploit the opportunities that we will get through our fashion tour to London. Mm -hmm. Right? So, there was like a 15 minutes interview and a 45 minute, uh, sorry, 15 minute presentation and a 45 minutes interview that we faced. And on the next day, they announced me as the winner. I see. So, what will happen is a global award. It's not only uh, in Sri Lanka. It happens in 20 to 25 countries all around the globe. So, what we did was the winners were sent to UK, mm -hmm. to London, uh, for like a 10-day study tour. We'll come to that uh, discussion, for Prasanna, because uh, I think what you did in London and what you can bring from there to Sri Lanka is a very interesting aspect. But before that, we'll have a quick commercial break on Good Morning Sri Lanka and be back.